Hello everybody and welcome to the 2020 Shut Up and Sit Down Holiday Gift Guide in which we help you to find board games and card games for the special people in your life. Now of course Shut Up and Sit Down covers great games all year long so you might be asking Quinns what makes this video special and the answer is all of the many games in this video presented by myself, Matt, Ava and Tom, the whole lot of team Shut Up and Sit Down, all the games we're going to be telling you about are actually in stock. That's right, it's not the case that Shut Up and Sit Down tells you to buy uh, something that you can't actually then buy. No, in this video all the games have tons of stock available in both Europe and America. So if you see something you fancy in this video, and you certainly should, you can just give it a Google wherever you live and you might well be able to find a copy. So if that hasn't whet your appetite, I'm going to kick us off and I'm going to kick us off with My City. Not a game that we've given a lot of coverage on Shut Up and Sit Down, despite it being one of the most quietly competent boxes released in the last few years. What you've got with My City is a terrifically simple game that plays a bit like a cross between Tetris and SimCity. These building pieces come out and then you're going to decide where they go, trying to get the most points for your city while still being able to pack everything in to your personal board. Now this game isn't just simple, it's not just fantastic fun for everybody, it is also dirt cheap and it is also shh, a legacy game. This is the kind of board game where all of the games you play of it form a campaign, a little story, always introducing new components, mechanics, and ideas, so that every game of it feels a bit different and surprising, and at the end of the campaign it's going to tell you which of your players was the grand final winner. So that is just absolutely great. On a similar vein, for stuff that is perfectly simple and lovely and relaxing, I'm going to recommend Tournament at Camelot and Tournament at Avalon. And what you've got here are trick-taking games. If you don't know what trick-taking games are, that's fine. Basically it's a particularly relaxing, kind of loosey-goosey style of card game. It's not that easy to get your head around. I wouldn't recommend teaching this to, uh, well actually I would suggest teaching it to grandparents because grandparents probably do know what trick-taking is. But these games are terrifically curious and funny and weird. Everyone gets their own special power, there are new items and rules modifiers constantly entering the fray. I think if you're looking for a card game that you're really going to get good value for money from, that you're going to have a good chortle packed time with, I think those games are great. But Quinns, you might be asking, where's the complicated stuff? Here's some complicated stuff. I'm going to suggest if you've got a board gamer in your life who can handle something a little bit more taxing in terms of rules, Gugong is just terrific. And not only does the base game have great stock right now, an expansion just came out that I haven't played because 2020, but is apparently quite good. So you could buy one or both. Imagine that. Gugong is a game about being civil servants in Imperial China, and rather than talking about it now, I'll just say I think it's great, and you can go and watch our review of it right here if you're interested in learning more. Finally, I'm going to give a shout out to the Undaunted games. These are kind of board game, card game hybrids that see just two players duking it out over either Normandy or North Africa, depending on which version of the game you get. Normandy's a lot simpler, a lot more sort of reliably entertaining. North Africa introduces vehicles and some extra rules and funky stuff. Look, the point is that those two games are some of the most interesting depictions of World War II that board games have seen in years. They are absolutely fascinating and tense and curious, and I can't recommend them highly enough. So that's it from me, but we are just getting started in this list of hot, hot, in-stock games. If it seems to you that 2020 has gone more quickly than previous years, that's because it has, and we're trapped in a compressing timeline. That means you've got only four minutes to buy all Christmas presents, or the whole thing is off. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet like a decapitated gingerbread man. First up, Pandemic Legacy. Did you know that these games are incredible? Apart from the second one, which isn't really as good. Pandemic Legacy Season Zero or the original Pandemic Legacy are both absolutely fabulous. A little on the dear side, but you cannot go wrong with them and they are available. Best with two to three, okay with four, but just an absolute delight for anyone who hasn't tried them. Quacks of Quedlinburg. This game is possibly the game I've played the most in the past two years, with a close second being Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. I'm a kind of a weird guy. I have had so much fun showing this to people, playing this again and again and again. I'm kind of getting tired of it now, but that's because I've played it probably about 20 times. Massive recommend. I think it's the Mario Kart of board games. Make of that what you will. Next up, Oceans. This game of efficiently... Fish, 
making your own species of underwater denizens and keeping them fed and stopping them from going extinct is made fabulous by the inclusion of cards that allow you to mutate into terrifying deep sea creatures. There is a ton of stuff within this box. Really highly recommend if you're not giving it a go. And finally, I'm just gonna be an absolute shill and I'm gonna recommend the Monica's Nonsense Box. Party game that I wrote with the help of Ava Foxfort, featured in this video, and the inimitable Philippa War. I'm hugely proud of this. We wrote a ton of great jokes in this and people have played it and say it's really good and really funny, which I was a bit terrified it wouldn't be. But apparently now it's certified to be good. So you could you could get this for someone Christmas and then we get a bit of money. So just to just to be completely transparent about that. But buy any of them. They're all good. Hello Christmas. I'm just going to walk you through a couple of my favourite little games that are perfect for playing with family and people who aren't quite as into games as you may be. First up, I'd like to recommend a game I've actually described as perfect. It's a two-player game of laying tiles and collecting buttons and trying to cover up as much of your little patchwork quilt as possible with lovely little patches. It's gorgeous. It's fun, just satisfying from beginning to end. Next is The Mind. This is a super simple game of trying to play cards in the right order without communicating except through body language, facial expressions, and the power of telepathy. It's basically a great game because you spend the whole time going, no thanks, say yes please to no thanks. A simple game of trying not to collect cards that are too high in number, but every time you want to not take the card that's on offer, you've got to put a little token on it and say no thanks. That token actually makes it better for the next person who's playing. Yeah, it's just a fruity little decision. Fruity little decision. The crew, like kind of a step up from the mind, probably the most complicated of all of the games that I've mentioned here. A really lovely little space adventure where you're trying to play tricks and do simple tasks and pull weird faces because you're not allowed to communicate that much. It's a little bit more intricate, perfect if you've got like a bridge playing dad or any person who loves bridge but you don't want to play bridge with them because bridge is a mission maybe try the crew it's lovely it's new it's the best co-op game i've played in the last year finally if you want to get a little bit more competitive a little bit more grabby i recommend ghost blitz a little german game about grabbing objects that look like this or this but only if the card tells you to pick the right thing great for families kids can pick it up quite easily and generally actually have that like kind of fast reaction time thing that mean that they're actually better than it than grown-ups which is kind of the best thing for a family game because it means nobody has to pretend to be bad because you'll all be bad at this and you can even there's even a rule for like making it twice as difficult about halfway through the game which i love springing on people because they're already overloaded at that point and it's brilliant happy christmas everybody hello i'm tom on the internet and you can trust me I'm going to give you four exciting recommendations for exciting games you can give to your exciting board game pals and or loved ones. First on my list is New York Zoo. This is a wonderful straightforward race game where players are trying their best to fill in this grid with these little Tetris pieces. And if you completely fill in your grid, you win. But as you go, you can fill in those pieces with animals. And if you fill in a whole piece with animals, you get to bin six kangaroos and swap them for a hot dog stand. Grim? Yes. But fun? Also yes. Every single game of this I've played has been satisfying and close and tense. Next up is Modern Art, a classic art auction game that's only as ruthless as the players are. Essentially each turn you're going to be offering up a painting for sale and people will buy that painting so they can flip it for a profit later on. But whether or not they can flip it for a profit later on is entirely determined by how popular that artist is each round, meaning that all the auctions are really fluffy. And combine that with the fact that you have multiple types of auction like double or fixed price or hidden auctions, you'll spend so much money overpaying for a painting and then it's worth nothing. This year I delved into the world of solo RPGs as a bit of a mental health and creativity balm, and if there's someone in your life you think will get a kick out of writing, writing, and relaxing, relaxing, then maybe these solo RPGs would be a good buy. Artifact is a solo RPG that has you playing as a mythical item. Uh, it combines a little bit of writing and a little bit of drawing with a lot of storytelling to make a game that is one of the most relaxing and mindful experiences I have had this year. Plus, the soundtrack is absolutely excellent. 
The Sealed Library and The Wretched are both games that utilise a Jenga tower to embody the tension and stress of a solo RPG. The Wretched is a game about being the last survivor on a dying spaceship, and The Sealed Library is about being the last librarian on Earth, trying to keep all the knowledge safe from what's outside. Those are both excellent. Trouble is, it's quite hard to find physical copies of most of these games. They're all on itch.io though, so you can go there and maybe make your own booklet as a nice little craft gift. And you could give them like a scented candle to go along with Artifact, or like an alien to go along with the Wretched. But what do you buy the board gamer that has everything? Well, I would say you should get them a subscription to Senate Magazine, a thrice yearly love letter to this hobby. It's lovingly illustrated and gorgeously written, and I cannot recommend it enough. They'll also send you back issues of the magazine, so you get a little bit of bulk reading before the new ones turn up. Well, wasn't that great? I mean, I, I hope it was, because I haven't seen anyone else's bits at the time that I'm recording my bits, but hopefully you've got your answer. What games should you buy for people at Christmas? The, those are the games you should buy for people at Christmas. That raises one more question. What games should you actually play at Christmas? What games should you bring to your family to teach them should your COVID bubble be big enough? And we can answer that with another video. Why not click on our 15 great, good, best games to play with your family at Christmas? Different category entirely, give it a click.